Hi everyone, this is Pete here. So today we're going to talk about the potential fire sale that is coming up in the property market in Singapore. So if you're looking out for a property, you definitely want to watch this. So first up, I was looking at the NUS Real Estate Survey and when they surveyed the people and the developer, there were a lot of concerns about a slowdown in global economy and job losses in the domestic economy, right? So this was the main issue and in fact, one of the things that was cited a lot for a potential slowdown both in the global and Singapore economy is because of rising interest rate and inflation. Interest rate is still going to be pretty high and in fact right now it has been high for a while already. But when you look at the real stats, the question is, hey, is interest rate a concern here, right? So you can see generally uh, the interest rate is, is this, this line over here, the home prices is actually this one. Right, you can see there are some instances whereby yes, the interest rate drop, okay, and then the interest rate increase, the home price also increase, you know. So it's actually not the opposite direction. If anything, what we can see from here is that the correlation is pretty weak over here. When we look at one of the data that was produced by Morgan Stanley and MES back then, right, is that when you look at over the different years period, uh, from 1993 all the way to today, is that whenever there's a step change in interest rate to go up, Right? For example, for 2003, right, right after the global financial crisis, from 0 0.6 to 3.6%, the property price actually still went up by another 8%. So will property prices actually right now fall because of high interest rate? Right? It's something that you really need to think about. Maybe the fire sale will really come, you know, even though there's no evidence to support this. So for those of you who are worried about interest rate, the good news is that right now the Federal Reserve is pretty much committed to reducing the interest rate by around three cuts this year, right? So you can see the common consensus is that by 2026, it's going to go back down to about 3%. And in the long run, they do expect it to drop down to less than 2.5%. So if you look at their projections this year for US, we are at 4.6. Following on next year, we are going to be at 3.6. And then uh, 2026, we're going to get 2.9, right? And last but not least, in the longer run, it's about 2.5. So why are we interested in the US interest rate? It's because the US interest rate will directly impact the Singapore interest rate. So for those of you out there who have been thinking that, hey, high interest rate is going to bring about lower prices, the thing I want you to think about here is not where the interest rate is, is that the rate of change of the interest rate. If the interest rate is changing downwards, what is going to happen to the property prices in this case? Now, another thing about high interest rate is that it actually encourages people to save, right? So right now, what we see is that in Singapore, we are almost at a decade's high of personal savings rate at 35.2%. Now, so for those of you out there who are not saving 35.2% of your income, you are probably in trouble. At the same time, it's not just that people are saving more in percentage, but the absolute amount is also increasing. Why? Because the personal disposable income has been on a rise. So actually the personal savings amount, right, is also on the rise. Now, with all this amount of money that is being stashed away in all these savings account and all these fixed deposit, right? One thing that many people fail to realize is that as the interest rate starts to come down, for example, right now we can see uh, UOB1 account has just recently changed their interest payout, right? From close to 5% down to just 4% for the first 150K. So the question I always ask people is, what is going to happen to all these savings that's being stashed aside in all these savings accounts, treasury bonds, Singapore savings bond, right? Where will they go to when the bank deposit rates start to drop? Okay, right? Yes, they will flow into real estate, stock market, whatever you name it, right? Even flowing to Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> in fact, I found out a site show that our government actually have an infographics uh, to tell people why is Taylor Swift concert good for Singapore. Okay, but just aside, it is still very important for you to think about that with high interest rate, people are stashing away the money. But as the interest rate starts to come down, what do you think they will do with the money and how will this impact property prices. Another thing that affects property prices in Singapore, which can potentially lead to a fire sale, right, is the building costs, okay? So the NUS Real Estate uh, Survey also surveyed developers and they asked them, how are you thinking about change in prices, all right? And in fact, about 42.9% of them felt that it's going to be moderately higher. But don't worry, this is just 42.9%. That means the rest of them felt that the price is going to be the same or slightly lower, right? So no need to worry, we still have about 57% that thinks that the price is going to drop. 
and they asked them how are you worried about the developmental cost right and one of the most significant developmental costs is actually land close to one third of them say that they are worried very concerned that land cost is actually going to go up in fact right now what we see in the papers is that last year was the highest land sale revenue that we had for 11 years 7.7 .7 billion this is actually higher than 2012 where we had 51 government land sale you know so the thing is last year we didn't have 51 government land sale that means per project the revenue was much higher but don't worry guys as we say right every bad news there is always a good news the good news is that majority of them felt that professional services are unlikely to change in fact were to go lower so i think your legal fee or deal will be cheaper maybe your property price will be cheaper as well on top of that construction prices has been increasing if you can see over here while cement prices has been relatively stable steel bar prices has been increasing over the last two quarter and this is expected to continue in fact even cement prices in the longer run has been on the rise in Singapore, right? Reaching close to a 10-year high. So the question I always pose to my clients who come to my one-on-one, -on -one, right, when they apply, it, and they want to wait for a fire sale, my question is, hey, if land prices and construction prices go up, right, how can housing prices go down? And I always tell them, don't worry, you can always have hope. Maybe the manpower cost will go down. Maybe the developer won't want to earn any money. Then your prices can come down. The next thing is I want to talk about supply, right? So if the supply is bad, of course, we are going to see a fire sale with huge amount of supply. And indeed, last year, we have an overwhelming of supply. In year 2023, we have more than 20,000 units uh, that were completed, okay? So even if next few years, even though when the supply is going to be really coming down, right? I guess you can hope that the property prices will drop from here. Even though the drop here right, is way more than half, right? Some of the people out there may still think the, think the fire sale will come and it might come true. Another thing to take note is that when you look over here, this is by Property Guru, and they look at between the demand and supply index, you can see that there is a very big difference between the rental market and the sale market. While the rental market, the demand uh, is dropping as the supply is increasing, okay, in the sales portion, the demand is relatively stable and the supply is still relatively stable. And this is why right now, when we look at the rental prices, it has been dropping, hooray. So with lower prices, definitely we are going to see lower condo prices, right? Um, but we are not seeing that, okay? So yes, we can still hope for a fire sale, but right now the condo prices is still pretty fine. In fact, with increasing prices, what we are seeing right now is that the volume of transaction is dropping. And why is that the case? And let's bring back our good friend, the interest rate. Because with high interest rate, guess what? Nobody wants to buy a new place because when you buy a new place, you will have to take on a higher interest rate again. It doesn't make sense for them, right? So right now we are seeing really the clash of the worst situation where the resale supply is dropping, the new launch supply is dropping, but the demand is still holding steady. In fact, increasing as the population increase. Now, what do you think is going to happen to the prices? Now, let me sidetrack a little bit, right? Over here, sometimes people will say, hey, Pete, property prices is really being uh, stirred up by the foreigners. And I want to really do justice to our foreigners in Singapore, right? Is that I don't think they are here to be blamed. Uh. In fact, uh, you can see uh, the foreigner index, right, has been dropping uh, like crazy, okay? So please stop blaming the foreigners. In fact, when you look at the total purchase, especially after the ABSD is being announced in April, right? The amount of foreigners buying uh, is so little that the dark blue bar is almost indistinguishable already. So with the lower supply picture, what do you think is going to happen to our property prices going forward, right? So um, maybe there's a fire sale, you can pray for it, right? Now let's go into demand situation. Now for demand, generally, right, I would say demand is more important than supply. Why? Because demand is actually talking about how much buying power you have. And over here, while interest rate just now we saw, yeah, has not much correlation. Uh. GDP over here, you can see the green dots. Uh, the GDP has very strong correlation with property prices. So how are we predicting GDP this year? Not me, but how is the Singapore government predicting, right? So Ministry of Trade and Industry says that this year we are going to be about 1 to 3%. Last year we did around 1%. What does that mean? If you take one to three in the middle on the average is about two percent that means there's very likelihood we're going to be doing twice as good in terms of gdp growth okay 
And this is not just from MTI. And in fact, when they poll a group of financial forecaster, right, the general consensus is that we are going to have an economic growth of 2.5%. In fact, when they ask them in terms of corporate profitability, okay, there used to be only 11% of them feeling that corporate profitability is going to go higher. But this year, what we are seeing is that 37% of them feel that there's going to be much more profit in the corporate world. Now, with more profit in the corporate world, likely this will translate to higher wages as well. So with all this, there's a huge amount of buying power over there. What do you think is going to be happening to property prices? Will the fire sale come? Perhaps we can always hope, right? Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the debt, right? The leverage. Now, it gets a lot of people very worried. In fact, one of the most common things I hear people say is that, wow, right now, the amount of debt in the system is huge. And I want to fact check that. I want to see whether is that accurate or not, right? So I went to the Singapore uh, stats, the sources to see, right? And you can see over here, while the household residential property asset prices has been increasing, at the same time, individual household asset, right? In terms of um, cash, right? They call it currency and deposits. And also their CPF has been on the rise as well. And these two are the real firepower behind where people buy a house. Because when you buy a house, you need cash and CPF to make the down payment. And in fact, the CPF will continue to make a large part of the mortgages. So you can see over here, it is higher prices is not really unsubstantiated because actually the financial ability of each household is increasing over here. In fact, if I look at just the mortgage loan, right, which is the thing that we should be worried about, you can see that mortgage loan, which is the orange color one, has been kind of flattening out, okay? While the cash component and the CPF component of household balance sheet, right, how much they hold in per household, has been increasing. And why is this important? Because you can actually select different uh, segments in the Singapore stats. And one thing I want to tell everyone is that high prices does not crash the market, right? High mortgages does. Imagine you're a property owner and you have fully paid off already. You have no mortgage then. Is there a reason for you to fire sale? Very unlikely. A fire sale likely only happens when the mortgage becomes unsustainable. And in this case, we can see that the mortgage is actually flattening out. And if we compare the situation to the past years, right? For example, when I compare the cash component, which is over here, the, the purple color uh, part, the blue color where I look at CPF, and when I look at mortgage, okay, mortgage loan, right? This year in 2023, fourth quarter, the mortgage component in total is about 18.5%, right? If I go to... The year 2007, why am I talking about 2007? Because this was the right before the global financial crisis. And we can see the mortgage component over here is actually much bigger. It's at 27.5% over here, right? And if I were to zoom back all the way to the dot-com bus, which is the year 2000, you can see that the mortgage component over here is even higher at 33.2%. So right now, having the the only 18.5%, are we in a very scary situation? Uh, I don't think so. So will this cause a fire sale? Yes, maybe those people who can't even afford 18% of their total asset in property, they will. Otherwise, do think about how will the fire sale occur? And I love the government for giving us a lot of this data in pictures because and charts. Uh, it helps us to really understand. So over here, when you look at household debt versus the personal disposable income, we are currently almost at a 10-year low, right? Outstanding housing loan, yes, it has been increasing, but if you look in terms of year-on-year -year growth, it actually has been dropping. So really, these are all thanks to the effect of high interest rate environment. So once again, think about it, when interest rate drops, when people are able to take more loan and they will want to, what is going to happen, right? Those people who have been on the side, they are not moving their property. When interest rate comes down, what is going to happen? Another thing is where are the sources of fire sale, right? Is when the house is in financial difficulty or they call it the non-performing loans. And right now, I can say that we are at really quite a low situation at just 0.24%. Not 24%, 0.24%. And our 10-year average is actually 0.38%. So less than half a percent of the mortgage loan out there is in serious trouble of defaulting. So that's why out there, when you look for fire sale, it is like so hard to find fire. It is like winter right now. And this is another illustration about household debt, right? So if you look in terms of household debt, which includes mortgage debt, it has been flattening out 
whereas the cash that each household hold has been increasing. Alright, so until this point, I hope that you can tell the sarcasm that I'm doing throughout the whole video. These are all part of my April's full uh, prank on all of you guys, right? So what are we seeing here is that there is really very little data to support a potential fire sale in the property market. But I just want to highlight one thing is that this is a bit of a forecast. Uh. I believe there will be a segment that is going to be impacted. And where is this place? This is actually the HDB segment. So the government has done really well in terms of bringing down, stabilizing the private property market. But there's only one segment that did not stabilize and that is the HDB prices, which has been going up. And in a recent interview with CNA, the, the Minister for National Development in Singapore talked about we are going to monitor and take whatever measures necessary to ensure stability in our property market and make sure that the property market does not run ahead of the economic fundamentals. So the, the thing that uh, kind of spooked me here is that they say take whatever measures that may be necessary. Wow, it's such a strong word, right? So I think right now the government is really focusing their attention after having settled the private property pricing, making sure that it's stable. And now they're really going to hem down on HDB prices. So while I'm not so worried for condos and landed prices, I'm really quite worried for HDB with the government intention. And right now with elections on its way, my gut feel is that they may not do any action before election, right? Uh, not to stir the boat, right? But will they do it after elections? Nobody knows. So the important thing here is that after I've spoken to you about interest rate, supply and demand, personal income, personal savings rate, and all these numbers, ask yourself this very important question is that if the data supports overwhelmingly against a fire sale, and you still hope that the fire sale will come, all right? What does this mean? Alright guys, so I hope this video is very useful. I don't know whether this April Fool prank makes sense. Uh. Okay, so if you find this video a bit ridiculous, do watch it again and just remember my thinking and my intention is that there's really no fire sale coming up given all the data sets. Alright, I just want to wish everybody here a happy April Fool. And once again, and for those of you who want to have the one-on-one -on -one call with me, regarding your property uh, arrangement and investment. I'm happy to announce that we are once again open for the next 15 application. All right, so if you'd like to apply, you can click on this link over here, right? And my team will get in touch with you shortly.